Hey guys, welcome back to the Stuff of Legend. My name is D'Lo and I have some movie news for you. So we have Jared Leto has just been cast to play Michael Morbius in the Sony-verse, which is a Spider-Man universe that's still kind of separate from Spider-Man because Spider-Man's in the MCU and the Sony-verse is not. So once Spider-Man's contracts end in the MCU, he will likely return back to Sony and then he will be part of that universe with Venom, an upcoming movie. But they've also uh, canceled the Silver and Black movie, which had, you know, Silver Sable and Black Cat. So that's no longer on the slate. That was there, now it's not. But now we have Michael Morbius. This is really exciting because Jared Leto's a freak, all right? <laughs> and I mean this in the nicest way because I think him as the Joker is a trip. And I mean this, like, first of all, I think everybody's favorite Joker is probably Heath Ledger. Um, he's amazing. Uh, that was one of the best Joker performances we've ever gotten, and it was super unique. Now, on that same coin, Jared Leto's is very unique. Jared Leto's is kind of like this sick, twisted, kind of more perverse take on the Joker. And it's kind of, uh, it's, it's weird to watch, but it's almost entrancing. It's like, dude, like, how, how are you like this creepy? How are you this freak? And he's like, he, he likes to play freaks and weirdos and he does this in a lot of film. So Michael Morbius, the living vampire, was a guy who had a rare blood disease. And he was trying to cure this by like mixing animal DNA. And eventually he got onto bats. And it ended up being like this bat DNA, kind of like how Spider-Man got bit by a radioactive spider. It was like the bat DNA infused with him. And he got this crazy like mutation instead of getting cured, like he thought he would. He ended up getting mutated into Morbius, the living vampire. And he has bat-like features, kind of like a bat nose, bat ears. He's got wings, and um, his like hands are kind of claw-ish. It's weird. And uh, he's got gray skin, like zombie-looking, vampire pale, like gray white skin. But he's also that vampire, so he's like he's still in love with the person that he was in love with. I don't know if they'll do this in the movie, but in the show, it was with Felicia Hardy. Felicia Hardy is the black cat. She becomes the black cat. He's in love with her, but now he's this freak and he's trying to, you know, like survive. But now all of a sudden with this bat-like thing in a vampiric type of storyline, he needs to absorb in the show, it was called plasma. They'll probably just go with blood, but plasma from people to stay alive. So he has to do this from time to time, absorb the plasma out of people to live. He has to fight this urge to essentially kill people. You know, it's, it's hurting people, putting people in the hospital, all that kind of stuff. Spider-Man's trying to stop him because Spider-Man just knows that there's this weird vampire that's attacking people and people are going to the hospital and so he's trying to stop him. Michael Morbius is not a bad guy, but now he's infused with this need to survive by taking essentially the life from others. And so he has super strength, he's ridiculously strong, uh, flight, and then he also has the ability to absorb plasma from people. I think in the show, he actually did it with his hands. He would put his hands on people and it just absorbs the life plasma out of people. Probably like, they'll probably go with like life force or whatever, I don't know. Um, or maybe they'll go with the route where he actually has to bite you like a vampire and then suck the blood. It'd be a little different, but I mean, it still fits, it's vampiric. So, and it, it'll look cooler than having like a mouth on his hand, that was gross. But um, anyway. So I think that this is going to be really cool. It's a very complex character. He's not a villain, kind of like how they've recently adapted Venom, where he's not a villain, but he's, you know, the, the symbiote on Earth causes him to want, have all this sin, like sinful evil. I want to kill. I want to, you know, do all this stuff. And then he's kind of fighting that a little bit. That's kind of how it's going to be. It's going to be similar into this anti-hero role where he's going to be fighting his natural urges and also trying not to be a bad guy and stopping others from being bad as well. So like stop breaking up muggings and all that kind of stuff. It'll kind of have like a crow feel, you know, like where it's like, it's dark, it's sinister, um, but you see him like interrupting villainous acts. That's kind of like where it'll, it'll, it'll kind of balance in that area uh, most likely. Now, that being said, they canceled Silver and Black because nobody wanted it. it. Sounds terrible. And without, this is what I said before. I don't know if I said it on the channel before. Maybe I did, maybe I haven't, but I've been saying this to all my friends. Without Spider-Man and without Black Cat, there is no interesting reason to have Michael Morbius. But they canceled Silver and Black. Maybe this is their opportunity to introduce Felicia Hardy into this universe 
and maybe they'll see how people respond to that by using Michael Morbius as the avenue to get there, since we don't have Spider-Man. And then you also, you know, if, if people respond well to whoever's going to play Felicia Hardy, then maybe they'll consider giving Black Cat her own movie, and Michael Morbius will still exist in that universe. That could be more interesting. I think that you need Spider-Man, essentially, to have Black Cat. You need the Super Soldier Serum to have the Black Cat have powers. You know, like, it's, it's this weird thing where you need both, that's how the character was written and nobody really wants to see them adapted in a way that doesn't include their original origins or close to their original origins i mean venom's gonna have to stray a tiny bit just to give him an existence outside of new york city and spider-man it'll have to be different but the trailer looks good for venom and so i think that that if that goes well Morbius will continue on and do well and then from there they might have the ability to introduce Black Cat and they'll set up this universe so that eventually when Marvel gets spy uh, allows Spider-Man to go back to Sony then we'll have that. It'll probably be years down the road. Maybe eventually Sony will like, uh, okay, we can adapt our universe into yours or whatever. You know, they'll allow some sort of merger. I don't think Kevin Feige wants anything to do with their universe though. So that'll probably not happen, but it could happen. Anything's possible. I mean, we didn't, we didn't know if... Marvel was ever going to get a chance to get Fox's characters back because Fox has been so persistent about keeping these movies going to hold the rights. But now we have this, you know, Fox is being bought by Disney, and so we'll see how this lands. But this is really cool. One thing I wanted to say, the casting is perfect. There's a few different roles that Jared Leto's played where he's a full-on creep. He's a full-on weirdo. Um, I think even in Blade Runner uh, 2049, he was in there. He played a creep as well. There's a lot of a lot of ways he could do that, but he's also a pretty good-looking guy if you see him like just in his normal photos, um, without like any like ca character acting or any of that. He's a pretty good-looking guy. He'll start out as this like really like attractive, like suave kind of guy, and then he'll go full like Twilight vampire. And I don't want to say Twilight because people will be like, "Oh, we don't want Twilight in Marvel." But that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is he's gonna have that allure, a vampiric allure and attraction where the females are like drawn to him, but now he's this dangerous person. And so now he's got this urge, he's trying not to kill the woman, the woman he loves, which hopefully is Felicia Hardy. I hope that they keep that and they go in that direction. Uh, that would be awesome. Daniel Espinoza, who recently directed Life, which is the movie with Jake Gyllenhaal and Ryan Reynolds where they were in space. This kind of got this like suspense type of um, aspect to it. I never saw the film. I saw the trailers uh, a number of times because it was really cool. And I was like, I'm totally gonna go see that. And I never went to see it. Just got lost in my time. But Daniel Espinosa directed that. I think you're going to need an aspect of either some sort of like dramatic horror, dramatic suspense to kind of give Morbius that kind of grit, but also suave, like an, an attractive poison. Daniel Espinosa, I think, is going to be able to bring this character to life in a really cool way. I saw the trailers for life. It looked really cool. You know, like I, it, it's a really clean cinematic but it also has that edge of horror, edge of kind of suspense and like, whoa, oh my gosh, you're like, no, 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 please, please don't, no, 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 no. Like opening the door and there's like this weird living thing. And finally, my last point to why this is a really good idea is because vampires. So adding vampires, adding the undead, adding that whole realm of characters, undead, you know, zombies, vampires, and uh, all of that, all of that type of dark character elements, adding all those dark elements to the Sony universe could be like a beta. It'll be a way for Marvel to take a look and see what's happening over here with Sony and they'll be able to say, oh, you know, like the fans are responding pretty well to these zombies. Maybe we can finally add Blade back into the MCU on Netflix and allow that gritty, you know, darker, you know, hashing, slashing and all that stuff to happen on Netflix because people still want that and that can take place in the MCU. Or if they want, they could take that another level and start doing like Doctor Strange and Mephisto or Black Panther and Mephisto. You know, you can get some of those guys in there that are kind of in that nature, demons, uh, vampires, undead, all that stuff. You can have that in the MCU and fans do want it, but I think they're waiting to test the waters because it's generally kind of like a family oriented thing. But if people start to go out, hopefully in droves, start flocking to the theaters to see Venom and then they like it and then Morbius and they like it, It'll allow vampires to kind of become a thing. We'll get Blade. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that we'll get Blade after we get Morbius. In a different universe, you know, Morbius is over here in Sony, but then in the MCU, they'll be like, hey, that actually worked. They're making some money. 
will make a whole lot more money with a much more prominent character like Blade. So then they'll do that. Or like in Black Panther 2, they'll allow him to be the king of the dead. Or they'll allow, you know, like they'll do those kinds of things that we're hoping that they do. We'll see the Marvel Universe start to go and take on Mephisto. Or we'll see Dormammu come back and we'll see his dimension of darkness or whatever. You know, like we'll see all of those things. Because those are things that we all want. So those are some of the pros to why I think this Michael Morbius thing is a very good idea. I think the casting is spot on. I think the direction uh, of the director will be a very good thing for that movie. It fits. And then I also think that it'll do a lot for Marvel that Sony is testing the waters on vampires. So that is really cool. I hope that this works out because frankly, I'm excited for this film. I think this is a great idea. And uh, I never wanted a Morbius film. I never thought, oh, we should get a Morbius film. I was always thinking, do Morbius as a villain for Spider-Man. But I think it could work. I think it has potential. Venom is starting to look good and that's giving me faith that these other projects could work. I still don't think Silver and Black is a good idea. I think that's terrible. I wouldn't even gone to see that. But having uh, Felicia Hardy in the story with Morbius, I think that's a good idea. I like that. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments and I would love to have this discussion with you guys. Do you think it's a good idea? Do you think it's a bad idea? Is there another Spider-Man character that you wanna see come to life in the Sony-verse or are you totally done with that? Do you guys just want MCU from here on out? Let me know what you guys think and I can't wait to hear from you. I'll see you guys next time right here on The Stuff of Legend. Hey guys, d -Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them, and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend, and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video, or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legends.